realism and I'll use some of my notes quickly. I'm aware I've only got about four minutes, so I've got to be quick. Uh, I know, okay. The death of Terence McSweeney was a major international event, and this is following on what my friend Jim, a neighbour at home in Ireland, was saying. Uh, his death had a major impact, and his hunger strike had. It went uh, viral in those days across the world, because they had a very good media team in London, uh, Sinn Féin at the time, and in Ireland. It went out practically every single country, particularly in France and Spain and all those countries. On his death, the New York Times said, England rule in Ireland is a horrible failure. And, and that, that was spread throughout the world. That had been a total failure in Ireland. It was seen as the first step of many nations against colonization. And if you take the Indian population, who the year be 1919, where over 1,500 of them had been slaughtered in a, a massacre in Amritsar, you can see how... Indian people were watching Ireland at that time as well. Later, after McSweeney's death, it forced the American government and Congress to investigate Ireland, and they held Congress hearings both in America and in Ireland, invited McSweeney's widow and, and his sister, and uh, they investigated what happened in Ireland. And they investigated what they described as state terrorism in Ireland. I think it's very important to recognise that. The burning of villages and over in one year alone, something like 90 villages in Ireland, towns, and Cork, Brigham, Bantry, Granard, every, name, every single county was subject to burnings and the execution of innocent people. Now, the Americans saw this as state terrorism and they saw it as terrorism in Ireland. And it's important today when we look at what's happening in Palestine that we have the link. Imperialism is not something that's dead and gone in its history and colonization. It's live and active today. And Nelson Mandela recognized that when he said, no one is free until the Palestinians is free. And uh, if we look further, even when De Valera was over in America at the time, Max Sweeney's death, I mean, he attended uh, a massive meeting where there was uh, over 40,000 attended the Polo Grounds, which was the largest stadium in New York back then, and there was another 10,000 outside. And during the, the, his rally there, something like 300 Indian nationals, who were mainly Hindu, raced across the baseball field with carrying a large tricolour and a large then Indian flag. And they wrapped the two flags around De Valera and they reckon the encore went on for over 10 minutes. At the same time, Marcus Garvey, who was buried originally in Kensal Rise and uh, was later interred back to Jamaica, he's seen as the father figure of Jamaica, he was the leader of the United Black Improvement Association, and I read what he said. He said, hundreds and thousands of Irishmen have died as Martin, the cause of Irish freedom. They compelled the attention of the world, and I believe the death of McSweeney did more for the freedom of Ireland than probably anything they did for 500 years prior to his death. Following on, I'll quote an uh, American chaplain in the American Army. It's not hoping to quote the American Army, but also remember that 35,000 Irishmen died on the Union side in the Civil War in America, and sometimes they're forgotten on what they died for, and it's written out of history. He actually says, this is the top chaplain to the American forces then in Europe, as a follow-on from the First World War. He said, Lord Mayor McSweeney dies for the things we thought we fought for the World War, and his name shall go down for ages as an immortal who did not quake before the tyrant, and whose soul was grand to the, as to the ideals for which he died. The, their names will forever be remembered, not merely in Ireland, but wherever the word and reality of freedom are loved and honoured. In uh, Around the world there was various demonstrations from New York, mainly Catalonia, Spain and the Basque region, massive demonstrations. And I'll read what the British uh, consul there taught at the time, of the British, nowadays they call the British ambassador. British officials in Barcelona complained to the Foreign Office in London about how much McSweeney's death had affected British standing in the community there. The British Embassy in Madrid complained that every single paper supported the Irish cause and disapproved of England's treatment of McSweeney. British diplomats in Spain panicked over the damage done to British interests in Spain and in many other countries of the world. McSweeney's daughter, uh, if you ever get a chance to read a book called History's Daughter, which is his daughter who married Cahal Brew's son actually, and they lived in Dublin for many years, but she actually, in reviewing the archives international reaction to his death, stated, the worldwide reaction to the hunger strike brought the British governors to a knee. It was the hunger strike that rocked the empire. And we see that, that McSweeney 
was very much an anti-imperialist and an anti-colonial people. And many people took uh, note of his and followed on from what he did. There was a huge uh, reaction here in England, like 40,000 people marching in uh, Manchester, Mostrum Cemetery, uh, carrying three, three fake coffins. There was two other hunger strikers died at the same time uh, as McSweeney in Cork Prison. And in Bradford and Newcastle, and in, in Glasgow, there was similar large protests. In Australia, there was huge crowds as well. In India, his hunger strike was followed particularly because of their struggle. And it was quoted in the national paper at the time, if India deserves her freedom, every Indian child should regard themselves as the Lord Mayor of Cork. Uh, Gandhi followed McSweeney's struggle and later on thought very highly of him and particularly his principles of freedom. Uh, Jawal Nehru as well took inspiration from his writings and feeling, but the Indian revolutionary Bhagat Singh was a great admirer of McSweeney and he died himself in prison. And when his father pleaded with the British government to release his son, he actually wrote a letter asking his father to withdraw it. And he might as well have been speaking as McSweeney. He said, I am confident that my death will do more to smash the British Emperor than my release, and asked his father to withdraw the petition. Ho Chi Minh was living in London at the time of McSweeney. He'd witnessed the funeral. He was working as a hotel worker in London. And he said, a nation that has such citizens will never surrender. And he brought that back to his fight in Vietnam and that. The ANC and Mandela as well used McSweeney's principles of freedom as a guide when they're drawing up the manifestos and that. More recently, in Georgia, he was trying to break away from Moscow. And their leader, this is back in the 1990s, he said he was basing his struggles on breaking away from Moscow and Terence McSweeney and Roger Caseman seven decades earlier. Now, in my view, we had three anti-imperialists around the time of the Irish struggle for freedom. There was James Connolly, people who well know about his social principle and his fight. And also there was uh, Roger Caseman, who actually served terms in Brixton Prison as well. Going on to today, we know Brixton Prison. We spent a lot of the 1980s and 90s standing every Saturday morning outside here, and even the 70s, with the Price Sisters and the Belfast 10 in here, and the hunger strikes w went on here. And in the 80s, then, we had Martina and Ella in here. So every Saturday morning, we would be down here picketing. But I'd like to bring you up today in looking at anti-imperialism and what it means. As I said earlier, anti-imperialism needs to be kept alive. And what's happening in Palestine is very similar, and in some cases, much worse than what happened in Ireland in 1919 uh, to 1922. Uh, the, Desire to exterminate the people. It's like a combination of Cromwell, the great starvation of Ireland, and the War of Independence put together what's happening in Palestine. Uh, to exterminate the people, destroy the people, destroy the culture. And again, if you look back through history, they started off with saying it's no crime to kill an Irish man or woman. They started the same thing, it was no crime to kill a black person or an Indian. And now it's no crime to kill a Palestinian. That is wrong. And the moral compass of uh, the world has gone wrong, and here in Britain. Now, I don't know how Starmer, a human rights lawyer, can stay in Downing Street and before he came to power was arguing that the Palestinians should be starved. And it took him thousands and thousands of deaths before he caused for any kind of ceasefire. And then he was only doing it on the back of the Americans, really. So I would urge everyone here to. It's not enough to come here today to honour McSweeney. We need to take up the fight and fight imperialism today because that's what he would have done. I would urge everyone here to join us on all the Palestinian march and all the protests to challenge the ideology of genocide, to stop the war in Palestine and give the Palestinians a right to their own nation. Thank you, Pat.